Hey everyone, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. This time it's all about the new HomeKit features in iOS 11. HomeKit of course being Apple's home automation platform built into iOS and works across iPhone, iPod Touch, and the iPad. iOS 11 isn't quite out yet. Of course, it'll come out and ship uh, and be released to all the different devices right before the next uh, iPhone ships, whenever that exactly is gonna be late September and whatever it's gonna be called and whatever it's gonna look like if you believe or not believe the uh, leak images that are going around. But otherwise, you can get these features right now. You can play around with them, but a word of warning, if you're going to install the beta software, don't do it on a device that you really count on. I've waited a couple weeks, actually about five or six weeks. It's the third beta to the public because of the device I'm putting it on, an iPod Touch uh, most recent version, is something that I still use now and again, so I, I, I need to rely on it a bit, but I'm not putting it on my iPhone, which is my kind of daily driver device. So anyways, the public beta program, which is probably your best bet, you go to beta.apple.com on the device using Safari that you want to put this beta software on. You'll sign up for the program if you haven't already, sign in with your Apple ID, and you will download, uh, or it'll, it will prompt you to download the profile, which will cause your device to look for the beta software instead of just the next version uh, or the next, you know, more recent version of iOS for your device. You'll reboot the device, once it comes back up and it will then pull down the latest beta software, you'll go through the standard um, process of installing that. It'll reboot a couple times and you're good to go. Of course, the best way to show off the, the new features in iOS 11 is to compare them with iOS 10 side by side. And that's what we're going to do right now. So the main screens of Apple's iOS 11 home app really haven't changed at all from iOS 10. You still have the grid layout of both scenes and devices, or accessories as Apple calls them, and some status information at the top. Directly controlling accessories like lights basically remains the same, and multiple iOS devices see the changes pretty quickly. The color selector and adjustment wheels are still in place, and the details page of each device largely remains the same as well. There's nothing new when editing existing scenes and nothing new in rooms either. The changes begin on the automation tab, and especially when you edit or create an automation. A new test this automation button will run the automation's actions for you to make sure it does what you expect it to do. When you go into the time and day settings, everything is basically the same except the addition of people at the bottom. This is where you can now set the automation to run only if someone, or perhaps someone specific, is present at home. But this evidently can't be set up yet. Or is it just me? If you create a new automation, you'll see that the My Location Changes option has been split out to two new options, People Arrive and People Leave. This is the answer to home automation for multiple users. What Apple is building with this in iOS 11 is very powerful, but will be simple to set up. Instead of just triggering an automation to happen when your particular device enters or leaves your home, HomeKit will track its individual users. But you have to first share your HomeKit home with other users for this to work. Also new are time conditions, which you can really dial in to make custom automations. For example, turn on the lights when you or someone else arrives home, but perhaps only after sunset. What may not land in the home app, but is possible with HomeKit in iOS 11, is, for example, the ability to run automations only when the first user arrives home or the last user leaves home. We'll see what Apple adds to the home app for the September release. And some things aren't quite finished. Even though my Apple TV is my home hub and it's also running the beta software, I can't get to this setting just yet. The rest of the screens are basically the same, choosing what you want this automation to do. The last screen has the new test this automation button along with the new turn off feature. This lets you potentially reverse this automation after a certain time period, but again, I can't access it yet. This feature would be helpful for, say, turning off an outdoor light after a certain period of time after it had been turned on by a motion sensor automation. Now let's look at one of the other automation types, when an accessory is controlled. 
For some accessories, like door sensors, you can use this to trigger automations when the accessory isn't thought of as a sensor by Apple. But this automation also works for nearly any accessory that will change its state, like a light or switch turning on or off. And again, most of this is exactly the same, but the new time and people controls have been added. These will, again, give you more granular, conditional control of when this automation should run, like turning lights on at night if a door opens, but leaving lights as they are during the day. And the same thing goes for specific users too. There's nothing new in selecting what should happen, but there is the new turn off after control on the last page. That's essentially it for what's new in the iOS 11 Home app. The other HomeKit newsworthy area with changes is Control Center. It now takes up the entire screen and the three separate panes are condensed to one. The HomeKit icon would pop up your favorite accessories and scenes, controllable right from there, and as before, the first nine of each category are shown. The other new feature of Control Center that is somewhat smart home related is under music and its AirPlay icon. Apple announced at WWDC 2017 that you'll be able to AirPlay simultaneous audio to multiple devices right from your iOS device, but right now I can only select one at a time. This should get fixed in the final release. And one last note. Some of the new and more advanced features of HomeKit in iOS 11, like being able to schedule an automation for a specific calendar day, might not be added to Apple's Home app, but they probably will be included in third-party or manufacturer HomeKit apps like Elgato Eve and iDevices, which tend to support more advanced features. As always, if you have simple questions on lighting or home automation, send them to questions at smarterhomelife.com. And if it's a more challenging question or project, you can set up a video-based live consultation with me at smarterhomehelp.com. Smarter Home Life relies in part on kind, wonderful audience members like you to help support our operations, as the ads don't quite cover things. Learn more about the ways you can help out at smarterhomelife.com support. And check out Smarter Home Life across social media and the web for new and unique content between the videos released here on YouTube. I'm Joe DeKanzig. Thanks for watching. See you next time.